So if you follow um, sites like Hacker News or Reddit, you might have seen recently there was version 1.2 of Piston released. Um, this is a new uh, Python implementation written by his folks at uh, Dropbox. Um, Guido himself does not work on it, but some of his colleagues do. And um, I can think he, they have a kind of privileged relation with him, like having lunch, so you can get some insight on Python. Um, anyways, so my first question when I saw that was, why the hell new Python implementation? I mean, there are lots of them. Why would somebody take the time to write a completely new one from scratch? Um, to answer this question, I'm going to start by a, a small survey of the existing implementations. Uh, there's the CPython, which we all love, and which is the kind of the canonical implementation, the one written by Guido himself. Um, there's PyPy, which is a um, 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 JIT compiler. Um, you might have heard of RPython. It's, um, it's written in Python itself. It's kind of, uh, for Ruby folks, like a, it's kind of like Rubinius. Uh, there's Jiten running on the JVM, Iron Python and .NET. Um, there's Stackless Python. I don't know if it's selective. Basically, it, uh, it tried to address concurrency issues with the Gale and C Python. And finally, well, there are lots of more of them, but there, a few years ago, there was Unlad and Swaldo, which tried to uh, bring a different kind of JIT compiler to the Python world. Um, so where does P Piston fit in, in there? Um, all the implementation try to scratch, to scratch the uh, two main itch of Python. Um, one of them is performance, because CPython is not that slow, but not that great either. And the second one is concurrency, uh, such as stackless. Um, Piston specifically tries to um, address the performance issues. Um, how it does it is it's, um, it's also a JIT compiler. I'm going to explain it in more detail later, um, like PyPy, but it does um, use the more recent techniques uh, that are introduced in virtual machines of Chaz V8 by Google, which is the uh, JavaScript um, interpreter in Chrome. And um, the, uh, also the, um, what's it called? A uh, Jaeger monkey in the Firefox. Um, so um, I'm gonna, it's, it uses uh, these new uh, techniques. Um, well, actually they're older, but they've become more refined um, over the years. Uh, this is the method by method JIT compilation, um, as opposed to tracing JIT compilation. I'm gonna explain the difference between the two later. But first, I'm gonna, ah, oh God. <laughs> I'm gonna explain what's an interpreter and how a JIT compiler makes things faster. So what's an interpreter? If we look at cfl.c, which is in the Python source code, we can see just a huge switch uh, statement. So what Python does is it's re it reads your Python file, um, choose them for a while, and then it outputs uh, in memory a list of opcodes to execute. So you get this flat um, list of, of instructions that are fed into the switch statement, um, and Python is going to run them in sequence. Um, Obviously, there's a lot of overhead um, because there's this, uh, it's not the machine itself that executes our code, but this, this C code. So the first thing we can do is um, compile this code. So basically, the simplest technique is uh, just to take the, uh, the small fragment we had in each case, match them with the, um, with the instruction of the Python VM we had, and just make a li linear sequence of machine instruction that are just uh, exactly like what would have been executed by Python. Um, we save a bit of overhead, um, like we, we avoid ju uh, jumping and branching. Um, but this is just a small part of it. The main reason we want to do that is because we can now perform some pretty good optimizations. Um, So we'll take an example. Um, I mentioned two kind of JIT, uh, JIT compilers. Uh, we'll take this uh, small Python program and look how they could be optimized. Um, so we can see um, how, how it, uh, it tries to achieve this uh, higher performance. Um, well, I'm just going to walk through it quickly for those who cannot read it. So basically, you have a foo method. Um, it takes an accumulator and a counter, which is x. Um, usually, you would write something like that with range, but I just use while loop to, um, to avoid making a function call to keep things simple. So you take x from uh, 0 to, uh, to 100,000, and then you pass it to function bar, which is just going to switch on it. If it's um, less than um, 50,000, it's going to add 1 to it. Otherwise, it's going to add 2 to it. 
uh, then it's going to add it to accumulator, increment the counter, and then at the end it's going to return the accumulator. Um, so we're going to see the first technique. It's one method at a time. This is what um, a Piston is implementing um, and what V8 and all the other fast virtual machines are implementing. Um, so basically, I've put some assembler there. You don't have to read it or understand it. Uh, the main point I want to make is that for each method, uh, you will get one small piece of assembler. Um, it cannot be compiled one shot like this. Uh, this is a quite an optimized version. You can see it uh, at the bottom of the first one. It just use a add Q, which is the machine instruction to add two fixed numbers. numbers. Uh, to achieve this, it has to collect type information over multiple iteration. Um, the thre typical threshold for that are um, after maybe three iteration, it's going to add instrumentation code to record the type to in the function, and after a few th a thousand iteration, it will then generate the optimized code because it's quite expensive and you don't want to do this for code that's only going to be executed a few times. Um, the other technique is um, tracing JIT compilation. So basically, the first one um, generated assembly snippets based on the static structure of the code, one for each method. This one will take the dynamic structure of the code, that is the trace, the um, sequence of instruction that are uh, executed. Um, we can see the uh, assembly snippet generated for the, um, the, the first 50,000 iteration. So the, uh, the, uh, in the middle, we can see the add one is embedded in it. But when it will get to the add two, um, there's a guard statement, assertion failed, which will trigger the recompilation of the snippet. So we can go back and then re-instrument the code and then eventually recompile it to an optimized form. Um, so in practice, it seems like tracing um, compilation would be more uh, effective, um, in, in theory, I mean. But in practice, uh, we see that um, these uh, virtual machines like V8 um, have better performances. So the question is, um, will, it, uh, will the same performance gain uh, appear for Python code? Um, because it really depends on the type of programs, um, the, the language features. So it's still an open question. We don't know yet which one will be faster um, between PyPy, which is a, also a tracing uh, JIT compiler, and Piston, which is a bi-method compiler. Um, current, uh, the current status of, um, of Piston is uh, they've implemented maybe 80% of the language. So the benchmark are promising, but it still does less than the other implementation of Python, so it's hard to say if it's going to deliver the promise. Um, so it has a few other niceties, like they want to implement a better garbage collectors, but I think the most interesting thing about this implementation is the uh, performance that it, we may see in the future. Um, yeah, so in conclusion, I think it's a, it's a nice thing that people can come up with new implementation. It shows how the Python community is alive and trying new ideas. Thank you.